what we did, we found a way to manipulate and control the sine wave of electricity through software. Amber is reinventing how we use electricity. In some sense, they're putting the I in IoT or the smart in smart home. We've talked before, but I'm super happy to have Thar Casey, the CEO and founder of Amber Solutions, as well as Steve Backo, Senior Director, Switching Power at Infineon, to chat about a new partnership and relationship between those two companies. Thar, maybe let's start with you. Uh, give us a sense, recap what Amber does. So, John, thank you again for having me over. Um, I appreciate the time that you're taking. Um, yeah, as a founder of a company, I'm always going to say Amber is a very special company, of course. Very special. Most special <laughs> in the world. Special. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, um, what, we, what we did, we found a way to manipulate and control the sine wave of electricity through software through some key fundamental technologies. And they happen to be, of course, which is very, very critical in solid state, not electromechanical. And it has a complete path to silicon. And by controlling the sine wave of electricity and you can chop it and dice it and slice it and you can manipulate it and you can even turn it to a straight line DC by and with the elimination of electrolytics, magnetics, transformers, relays, uh, rectifiers, that's mind boggling to a lot of electrical engineers. Like this is impossible. How do you do that? Well, we found a way to extract DC directly from AC main without the conventional way of converting AC to DC. We don't, we extract it directly from AC main. So with that, in addition, we came up with AC switching, eliminating relays, eliminating all the electromechanical switching. We will mimic that inside solid state solution using, in this case, Infineon's technology, MOSFETs and microcontrollers. And the combination of that, now we have technologies that can disrupt the electrification infrastructure of buildings out there and beyond. So to take that down to something that somebody might uh, understand is in their house that is cool. I mean, you're taking what is massively bulky, uh, transformers in some cases. You're taking what is um, basically 100-year-old technology of flicking a switch and moving something physically so metal touches metal and current flows putting that in a very small package and adding tons of intelligence. So you can add all kinds of intelligence about what's going on in the environment, in terms of heat, in terms of pressure, uh, temperature, in terms of air quality, all that stuff in a very small package distributed throughout the entire home or business, correct? John, you said it. <laughs> you, you nailed it. Absolutely <laughs> correct. The form factor is important and adding the intelligence, two different types of intelligence. One intelligent that it's going to go inside the firmware where you can upgrade the firmware of that of that hardware and you can adjust it and change it to manipulate to do all these things. And then the second part of the intelligence, all these variety of different sensors for the environment, for the light, temperature, humidity, all of these things. So you're 100 percent correct. Yes. Amazing. Imagine that you build infrastructure and people are living in infrastructure right now that was built 50 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and being able to upgrade that with software. Well, let's talk about what you're doing right now. There's a new announcement. You're doing brokering a relationship with Infineon, which is not a small company. We're talking 40, 50,000 employees headquartered in Germany, uh, silicon manufacturing, lots of lots of they make the stuff that goes in the stuff in a lot of cases. Um, what's that new announcement? Well, Infineon is a visionary company, very solid, good, strong reputation out there in the industry from being a silicon uh, company, semiconductor company, and uh, they like cutting edge technologies. We are using their components to develop, in this case, our technology. So what we did, John, we took our time a little bit to establish strong relationship with 25 plus product manufacturing companies before we went to the semiconductor companies like Infineon to demonstrate our cool technology. Because at the end of the day, they're going to be very, very uh, critical on how we are using their components and doing magic with it.
So they're going to look at it under the microscope a lot more than the product manufacturing company where we can build a product for them in this case. So when we went to Infineon and we demonstrated this technology to them, of course, in the beginning, they were a little bit skeptic. Can you really do it? And then they, when they took their time and then they started to look under the hood and they started to test the technology in their facilities, they came to a conclusion that this is a cutting edge technology. And very quickly with Steve and his team, they start taking this cross the whole company where we are in, in discussions right now with about five, six different divisions within Infineon who's showing interest in our technology, not only for the purpose of productizations towards the product world, but also for their own technologies that they can take our chip and put it inside it and start marketing it to their own customer base. So this partnership is going to be a lot broader than you think as just a one-to-one -one relationship, but it's actually more like one to five or six within Infineon because they're such a large prestige company. Very cool. Let's bring in Steve here. Thank you for joining us, Steve, as well. And talk to me about Amber, what you saw there and how that relationship kicked off and why you were interested and excited about it. Yeah, thank you, John. I appreciate it. Uh, nice to meet you. So look, Amber is a, uh, a company that caught our eye a while back. Their technology is aimed at a market that's of great interest to us, right? Uh, opening up a new market for power MOSFETs is, uh, you know, it, it's uh, when you're the market leader, you're looking for areas to grow. This is one area we think we do some greenfield, uh, and and certainly Amber's technology caught our eye with respect to uh, the, the form factor that they can do the functions in, uh, and, and, and cost potential, uh, and you know this this idea of taking this uh, DC uh, voltage off of the AC mains without magnetics uh, in a very small form factor is compelling. It's frankly one of the challenges that. Uh, this market's had to adopt solid state devices uh, to replace the electromechanicals. Uh, there's a few others, but that's, that's one of them, right? You've got a fixed space in a wall plug or box or circuit breaker. Uh, and if you open them up today, they're pretty full, not much room in there. So uh, replacing those bulky magnetics uh, with solid state components uh, and being able to power them properly, these, these microcontrollers and other low voltage devices, um, you know, it needs they need a separate power supply, and that's uh, and, and Amber's demonstrated uh, capability of, of doing that very cost effectively in a small form factor. So it opens up a lot of avenues, and and so we've got a lot of technology we can bring to bear in this discussion, and that's what Thar referred to with all these different discussions going on with uh, within the company. Steve, contextualize that for a second. Why is it important to take uh, AC and make DC? Well, so when you, if you want to add intelligence to, to anything, um, it implies you've got a microcontroller or some other smart engine, uh, maybe an FPGA with a state machine, et cetera, to, to do those smarts, right? To monitor something, to uh, report back, right? Through a communication link or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, Zigbee, whatever. All those are low voltage devices. All those to take, you know, typically three volts, some, some take five volts, but maybe 2.5. You know, we're not talking 110 volts AC. This is five volts and below DC, and you've got to create that for those devices, or else they will they will fry. <laughs> they will fail. <laughs> they will fry. You'll have smoke. So um, doing that, and people can do that today. People take AC to DC all day long. It's been happening for a long time, but it requires magnetics and capacitors and your traditional circuit uh, to to do that. And those things at these frequencies take up space because they switch slow frequencies and they, they're bulky. And as I said, in these in these environments, you don't have much space in your in your outlets and your plugs and your circuit breakers. There's just no room for that. Uh, so yes, it can be done, but it's just not practical given what the market's expecting and what we've all have in our homes. So with their technology, it it uh, looks very promising. So we're we've been working with them, we've been evaluating it with them, um, helping to you know we've been trading ideas on how to improve it, uh, and. And it, it's been a, a wonderful little partnership and we've been lo looking forward to helping this market accelerate. This market is going to happen. These solid state devices will, will replace these electromechanical devices in the future. It's going to happen. Uh, and, and we're trying to make it happen sooner, right? And of course we want it with our, our parts, our stuff, if you will, than, than someone else's. And Amber's been a, so far a wonderful company to work with and 
we're excited at the potential here. So if you're not an electrical engineer, you don't think about this stuff, right? And I'll open this up to, to all of us right now. If you're not an electrical engineer, you don't think about this stuff. You you flip a switch and it works. You turn right. the power switch on the TV and it, you know on the remote and it, it jumps on. But I mean, this was a big deal in the early days of electricity. Would it be AC? Would it be DC? And Tesla had, Nikola Tesla had one opinion, right? And and who's the other guy? I'll, not Graham Bell, but give me a clue. Come on, you guys are the experts. Uh, uh, was Edison. fighting over AC and DC. Who was it? Oh, he's doing a Google search. I think it was Edison. Edison. <laughs> yeah, Edison. yeah, of course. Yes. Edison wanted to do DC and he thought that was the best way to go. And it, eventually we found out if we want to transmit electricity over long distances, we need to do AC because the, the, the loss is too great with DC here, right? So, okay, so we did that. But then everything that we use in our homes that uses electricity does use DC, correct? Yes. And so we actually need to take this AC and transform it to DC. And that's why we have these big blocks on our little cords. That's why our chargers are so bulky and everything like that. You're saying this can do away with that entirely, correct? Not totally entirely. Some of these things are not focused <laughs> for us right now. Yeah. We're focusing on the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit is what, what I would call it in here is the, um, it's the IoT market. Uh, yes. The outlets, the switches, the circuit breakers, the smoke detectors, carbon dioxide sensors, all of these things that we have around us. Okay, These, they are in the, let's say, to two watt, three watt, five watt. That's the sweet kind of uh, spot for amber mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. When you get into a charger, let's say for a monitor or for a computer, you get into the hundred watt. These are already external. Making them smaller is not going to be a very big deal. We're going after the hostile environment, small confined spaces where the current technology doesn't fit in this right. case, where we can fit with our the, the cool, small uh, technology in those spaces, like a circuit breaker. It's a hostile environment. You can fit, in this case, our technology in there without having to pull out everything and replace it with a brand new. It's perfect. It's a retrofit. That's a big market. So that's kind of where the focus is. Down the road, definitely, we're going to go after that. There's one more thing keep in mind. There's something called ARC. We don't create arc. Arc is, it's the spark that you see in this case when you touch, let's say two wires together. That arcs get generated almost constantly by every time you turn on a switch, every time you turn on anything. With solid state, it doesn't exist. There is no arc, we eliminate arc. So think about aerospace. Think about places where you don't want arc. You, arc is dangerous. That's most fires starts in homes from electrical because of arc, not anything else because of arc. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. What I love about that is that we have a smart home, right? And so, you know, I've got air quality sensors uh, on this floor. I've got one upstairs. I've got a few other things. And guess what the smart home looks like? Looks like a lot of freaking cords and dongles <laughs> and little pieces of hardware all over the place. And it doesn't look that smart. It doesn't look that good. But if we can fit it all inside the outlet and it's just there invisible, it's in my wall, it's in my window, it's in it's just embedded in the home, that's a big deal. Steve, I'm going to bring you back for a second here and sure. talk about where's this going to go? What's this partnership going to lead to? When are we going to see something come out of it? There's such cool tech here. I've talked to Thar about that even a year ago. When are we going to see products on the market and what are they going to look like? So from a product standpoint, I mean, uh, Amber is working with their customer base to provide them a, sol a complete solution, right? We're going to be the stuff in the side, the stuff, as you put it eloquently earlier, uh, in those solutions. Uh, so Thar can comment really on when those solutions will be hitting the market. What we're doing now, we'll continue to do is look at our suite of technologies and solutions and products to, to basically follow Amber's uh, lead, which what they want to focus on, and look for ways to help them partition some of these decisions that have to happen with as we get these technologies together inside of a package uh, and look for ways to optimize the cost and performance of those technologies that are fit for their end markets they're chasing. So they've got, you talked about the, the outlets and, and AC switches and uh, uh, plugs, and then you got circuit breakers. Some of those like circuit breaker markets gonna take a long time to develop. Standards are developing now. Uh, there's a lot of inertia in that market space. 
so that'll take some time to, to get people comfortable, familiar with it. There's a lot of big players in the marketplace that, that maybe don't want to see this thing change overnight, right? But, um, but I think there's be others that are going to try to lead that charge. And I think uh, that's going to be some of Amber's strategies to, to look for the early adopters. And, and, and we'll help them follow a plan where we can optimize technology, of course, and, and the overall system cost. Uh, and look for ways to come up with products that may be specifically tailored uh, for those applications because uh, you know the volumes are going to get quite big and cost, of course, is always an issue. So Obviously, absolutely. Thar, back to you then. Uh, when are we going to see some products on the market with this? We started already engaging with uh, product manufacturing companies now. We started to identify, in this case, the uh, the PRDs, uh, and we start to identifying the quantities, the products that they want, the specifications. We're hoping, in this case, by sometime next year, we will have signed some contracts with these companies in the form factor of a board, okay, for validations, testings, and start to design and everything. While we are working on the siliconization of that technology, then when the silicon is ready, then you will basically drop, in this case, a silicon in there and then accelerate the go-to-market for 2023. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, the, the goal right now. I'm hoping that the silicon shortages and all these uh, problems right now, it will not be a, an effect on us. But you know what? We're going to do the best we can. Um, but we, we survived COVID. You and I had our meeting in COVID and, and we've done well since then. And then I'm hoping that uh, while we're going through the silicon shortage right now, and we can survive that too. But uh, we're looking at 2023 for productization. It's almost like this innovation thing takes some time. I mean, like in, in the movies, I mean, you invent an idea and boom, it's, you got the suit flying in the air next week, right? I mean, <laughs> so I look forward to that because I think there's great promise here. Uh, is there anything that we've missed? Anything that uh, I haven't asked that I need to ask right now? What else should people know about this new opportunity? We've raised more money uh, and we have more granted patents. Uh, these going to be things that we're going to be touching on, John, very soon uh, that maybe you, you want to cover it later on. We demonstrated something that Infineon and other companies, they said, you know, can you demonstrate, for example, indestructible AC switch? Indestructible AC switch, it means now taking a solid state AC switch and it's going to survive the most hostile environment, such as in this case, the, uh, the inductive load, which is the energy that comes back from the motor to the circuit breaker, not the electricity that's coming from the grid to the circuit breaker. No, the energy that's got in the motor, when you turn it off, it, that energy has to go back somewhere. And that's called inductive load. Solid state technologies does not survive that. We found a way to survive that and we've demonstrated how we can survive that. And we have that coming up very soon and with, with a video and a press release, we'll share that with you. Uh, Jasco is one of the companies that uh, it's considered our future partner in this case. We're, uh, we're evaluating the different type of products to go to market with. Uh, they're on the cutting edge if they want to adopt our technology across not only their uh, dimmers and light switches, and but they want to go across other products also. And there are many other companies that they have not allowed us to share their name yet uh, who are showing strong interest in going to market with us. Uh, so since we talked to you and I, we've signed an additional seven or eight memorandum of understandings with these companies and getting into the details of what the specs are and everything as a first step towards contracts. And of course, Infineon right now, is it's, it's a huge plus for us right now because they represent the semiconductor parts of the, of the equation, not the products part of the equation. Mm -hmm. And Steve is a great champion, to be honest. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you for taking this time. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of this. I think it gets more and more important as we go forward. I mean, you mentioned, we mentioned off the top before we even started recording that we're going through a heat wave right now on the West Coast and Canada and the Northwest uh, yeah. of the U.S. And uh, guess what? The grid of the future is probably very complicated with lots of different solar all over the place. Some of the solar coming into your house, some of the grid stuff. And uh, the smarter we can get for componentry, the better. I look forward to seeing it. Thank you, John. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, thank you again.